review a couple of the things we went over last week, and then we'll learn how to bow on the open strings, where the open strings are located on the staff. If you downloaded the worksheet last week, I hope you emailed that to me, uh, and I will send it back with uh, the answers. If you don't want to do the worksheet, just email me a list of the names. That way we can have some personal interaction going on as well. Review bird landing on the shoulder, so we're in rest position here. Grab the shoulder of your violin, we'll go straight out, upside down, up in the air, tuck under your chin, and relax onto your shoulder. And then let's do that in reverse. So we grab the shoulder again. This is the right shoulder of the violin. Go up, flip it upside down, and come back under your elbow into rest position. Okay, so as we go along for the next few weeks, please be sure to always come up this way. Um, it avoids the bad habits of this, or, um, you know, just, it's a great way to develop a good habit and always reversing to come back down. Now, um, let's review our bow holder. Again, I'm holding it, I'm supporting it here in my other hand and we're gonna relax our hand at our side, completely limp, and um, coming up, trying not to change our hand in any way from what it was at our side. Adjust into the bow. Now, we have this, the thumb is the key to the ignition for the rocket ship. These two fingers are the doors to keep the astronauts from falling out. This finger is the windshield wiper on the grip. On the finger grip. The little finger is the gas pump on the screw and notice that my thumb is nicely curved. I like to call that a smiley thumb. All right and then let me set my violin down here really quick and we can take our hand and make our rocket ship launch. Going in all different directions with your bow just to get control and to feel the weight of the bow resisting against that bow hold that you have and then coming back and checking to see if you still have good bow hold. So we've got um, the thumb is curved, the fingers are down here keeping the door closed, the little finger is loose and this one is also loose. For now you're going to keep your hand here. You have your good bow hold set up. Now, um, you're gonna have to practice in a mirror in order to see that you're not bowing crooked like this. A lot of times, uh, the natural tendency would be to bow in kind of a U shape like this. So if you're not watching in the mirror, that's probably what you're gonna do. So be sure you're looking in the mirror so that you can see how to bow nice and straight like this. And you notice that my wrist is very open going to a kind of a v-shape at the bottom and a, a square in the middle and then kind of a v here be careful not to let your wrist come up too high when you come up to the top try to keep that down and relaxed your fingers need to be kind of flexible as you do this because down here you'll see that my little finger is quite straight and up here it, it changes. From the frog, right at the bottom here. All the way to the tip. And when I'm at the tip, my little finger actually doesn't quite reach. So that's okay. And for, the, for now, the tip might be about right here for you, and that's okay. Um, that's normal. You get used to it, and your, your muscles just get used to it and stretch out, so that's all right. Now let's try it on the D string.
practicing, like you just you're trying to get really comfortable with this so that this part of the of violin playing is kind of automatic so that you can think about the left hand when we're ready. So just spend a lot of time. I know it's boring, it's kind of it there's nothing exciting about this part, but um, you're building the foundation that is gonna make you a good player, a strong player. So go ahead and do each string 10 times per day at least. It would be good to, I mean, this doesn't take very long. It would be good to get this out twice a day. Uh, you'll, you'll progress much faster that way. So 10 times per day per string, making sure you're going all the way from the frog to the very tip and back. Another exercise that I would like for you to do this week is to set your violin bow in the middle of the bow on the string and just with your arm, I want you to kind of do a sort of an airplane wing motion. So your violin's gonna stay steady and your right arm is gonna be like an airplane wing. So go ahead and tip just to the D string, then to the A string, then to the E string and back and I'll turn a little bit so you can see that better. So just learning these angles, the A string, the D string, the G string. There's a tendency on the G string to pull your right shoulder up. Be careful of that, watch out for that. Keep that relaxed. Your elbow usually stays a little bit below your wrist. You can see it's kind of uphill to my wrist. So that's kind of where you want to be. So you've got G string, D string, A string, and E string is pretty relaxed over here by your side. Okay, so just getting used to that, getting, learning those angles so that when you're playing your open strings, you're not accidentally bumping the string beside it so, uh, so that you can get a nice clear tone. practice to learn open strings really well and just to get bow control and getting used to you know what your wrist needs to be doing over here bow control is a huge part of playing the violin so what you're gonna do is get a timer out and you're probably gonna want to start at about 30 seconds that's gonna be kind of the max and maybe on the D string or the A string because those tend to be easier to get a good sound uh, just let's try for the A string right now and you're just gonna start at the frog and you're gonna travel as slowly as you can while you're still keeping a good sound. You don't want it to scratch like that and you don't want it to um, crunch like that. So you're kind of learning the weight of your hand and, and your arm resting into the string, just how much you need to hold that up versus let it rest in. So just see if you can keep a nice solid tone for 30 seconds. And you're gonna do all of this practice in a mirror. It's gonna help you so much. Let's take a look at the treble clef staff and see where our open strings are located on the music staff. The music staff has five lines and four spaces. The treble clef sign looks a little bit like an S and it sits on the staff. You'll notice that the little circle, uh, part of that circles one line of the staff and that line note is actually a G. It's not the open G string, but it's a G. And um, so for that reason, treble clef is also known as the G clef. So where is our open G string? Now it's the lowest note on the violin and it actually goes below the treble clef staff. So we have to extend the staff a little bit by using ledger lines. Ledger lines are kind of like a ladder rung or, or a stair step, just adding those in below the staff to extend it down two lines and then we're going to put the G note on the space below there. The open D note is also below the staff but we don't have to extend it, it just sits right below the bottom line of the treble clef staff. The open A string is the second space note from the bottom of the staff. The open E string 
is the top space of the treble clef staff. I'm going to make these flashcards available to you once again as a PDF. If you'll go to instrumentsofrighteousness.com slash blog, you should find the post for this lesson with a link to the PDF at the bottom. All right, that is all we have for this week. So happy practicing again, and um, feel free to comment or email or contact me on Facebook, however you'd like to contact me. Let me know that you're taking the course, and just, you know, I'll answer questions happily and, and just do the best I can to to interact with you and make this the best experience that I can make it be for you over long distance. Look forward to seeing you again next week with another lesson and please like and subscribe and get in touch on Facebook as well.